Welcome everyone, we got another amazing guest. I mean, this guy is a fan favorite and he is on the GG Super Millions final table. It feels like every week as I am the host and I always have to double check, it's not the previous week's thing because my man is always there, but we got Victor Malinowski here and uh, Victor, how's it? how are you doing and how has your week been at Triton? Uh, it's been good, uh, like the last time on Cyprus, so I bricked uh, all the early tournaments and I make a deep run in the last one, the main one, main event, so feels nice. Uh, obviously, uh, it's like uh, like in every tournament, uh, just want to go for the win. I got third, uh, but it's still a good result and uh, action has been really nice, uh, like Cyprus a lot. May not know, most people do know you, but you are, would you consider yourself, you're more of a cash game player than tournament player? 100%, because that's mm, the, like, let's say, Six days a week I play cash games and then on the Sundays I just play tournaments and yeah. most of it is just to keep it sharp, like uh, I found some more deepness in the tournament game because mm -hmm. at first I thought, well, the stacks are so shallow, it's kind of straightforward like most people, cash game players will think. And, right. uh, it's actually, it's more deep than a lot of people will think because there are so many different scenarios, a lot of like unpredictability. So, uh, yeah, but for sure, it's like my background is cash game, and I think that's the best background you can have for the whole Texas Hold'em because right. you just have a better understanding of the game. And where did you come from? Because you kind of are a mythical creature on <laughs> on the poker mythical streets. Creature. People like really like you're, you. Are, people always ask me about you yeah. too, and I'm in the in the U.S. But you know, we're, we're, were you doing anything before poker? Or was it just you found poker? And uh, that was no, no, I was born in Belarus originally, so okay. I I guess I have a good blood for poker because a lot of good players from yes. there. Yes, uh, but I was two. We moved to Poland with my family, so. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm uh, Polish and Belarusian. Uh, I see myself like a boat. I, I have a, uh, two passports. And uh, before that, I was doing sports. It's not. I was playing handball. It's not a very popular sport in mm -hmm. uh, in states or UK. But people from Europe will know it. It's like it's on the Olympics. It's quite like a. Uh, high contact sport uh, reminds a bit of a basketball and yeah, uh, yeah I was doing very well and uh, got an injury uh, I always was a, I liked the games when I was young so uh, I just picked up on poker as well after. is there a moment though when it like do you remember a friend showed it to you, you saw it on TV how old were you when did you first oh yeah, yeah I was about 19 I hit my first knee injury and uh, I had some more free time so I hurt my knee and uh, was like re rehabbing it and my brother showed me uh, poker. Is he older, younger? Oh, he's an older brother. I was watching, I believe, uh, like a PCA or APT, maybe Monaco or something. Okay. And I'm like, uh, that's pretty cool. Start to pick up the strategy, watch the movie, you know, it's like uh, uh, if someone was following me, probably know the story, but uh, I found it pretty interesting that you can, uh, be not uh, influenced by like others and just like everything is in your hand and it's like a more individual sport than like right. a handball it, and plus uh, a lot of traits are um, really move from sports to poker like uh, like for example party controllers used to play tennis i yep. believe right mm -hmm. so a lot of traits are really good for poker as well and uh, I found the love in the game and when I came back from the injury I had like a tough choice to make like what what to do with my life and I thought uh, well uh, <laughs> they paid me that much in handball and in poker I already playing uh, high stakes online yeah. even though I wasn't a professional but I just thought you need to just pick one thing otherwise you'll be like mediocre in one area, so that's not the best way to do. And how about your family and friends? And when you said, hey, I'm now doing this, oh. how was that conversation? <laughs> they were freaking out because, you know, I was playing sports since I was like five or six. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so they were like, whoa, that's like insane. Especially that, uh, it's funny, I didn't tell it to anyone. So my uncle, because I have a sport family, my uncle's a professional soccer player. 
Okay. And uh, he had a gambling addiction roulette. He lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine I'm telling to my parents, well, I gotta go gamble for a living. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I was on the contract in the German team back then. And uh, we finished the first round of the season. And I just like, I already knew that, uh, okay, that's the thing I want to pursue in my life. And I came to the uh to the director of like a sports team and said well guys i finishing my career they were like what the, what's going on right how's that possible yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but you know after a couple of months they just saw that i'm doing very well i'm helping them out and now they they support me and it's also funny we, we went to last try in madrid i bring my parents mm -hmm. i bubbled the main i think with like uh, the nine on the river was ahead <laughs> and I saw the face of my parents and were like, you know, I'm like, don't worry, it's, it's all good. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I get yeah. on the cash games later too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even if not cash game, it's just, uh, you know, people, uh, I found it pretty interesting that the poker players are a little bit more disincentivized towards like swings and money and stuff, yep. which is pretty unique in the world, I'll say, if someone is not a poker player. Right. Yeah, no, it's completely different. Even dinners or you want to gamble for a bill or something, people, it's different. Yeah, right? it's Just like a bit of a tension or something like this. You know, it's, uh, you get disincentivized towards money in, like a, yeah. in a good and a bad way as well. But if you want to play like a high stakes, you cannot really think about, oh, I'm betting like a car or something like that because uh, it will make you more tensed up. You just think about big blind yep. and uh, otherwise uh, it's no good. And what was there a major breakthrough for you? Cause you know, the, the Triton events, you've been coming to a few, right? You've been how many stops or several mm, at least? I think first, my first one was like 2016 Macau maybe. Okay, so for a while. Uh, yeah, yeah, after you know, COVID hit and stuff. Yep. So, but as a major breakthrough, I wouldn't say so because I was already doing well online in the tournaments and uh, I was playing high stakes cash, mm -hmm. it's just, like there was no like a uh, perfect spot I could go into and play and things like that. So, uh, but was it a tournament score or was it just you rose up from the cash games? You started what with uh, how like did you deposit? Did no, you free roll? How, I'm how did you pretty get bad for poker economy because I start from free rolls. <laughs> okay, I won the free roll. Uh, like no, not the one. I won. Got the third place, twenty bucks, I guess. You literally didn't deposit. No, no, no. Wow, that's amazing. Because yeah. that's not bad. That's that's the dream. What do you mean? That's yeah, you people, yeah, I'm just saying for available. in general for poker economy. Yeah. But actually, that's the economy. It's you know the economy is also based on poker dreams. So that's also some value in that. That uh, even in like 2014-15, I didn't deposit and uh, I achieved quite fast success. But as a breakthrough, I actually wouldn't call it going to the like a high rollers for anything, but mm -hmm. maybe when I was playing like 50 uh, cents, $1. And I just felt that my basic knowledge is not enough. I just got a really nice coaching group. Linus was like a little bit in the mix there as well, mm -hmm. but he was, he chose a different path. And there's a lot of like a good high stakes cash game players that also, came from the same team, we were like quite strict and like uh, how did we work on the game. And uh, yeah, after that, a uh, couple of months, I started to play like maybe 5.10 US. Uh, I was still doing sports and uh, after that, I was just like kind of flawlessly moving up uh, the stakes. Yep. And I flew to Macau when I just beat like the biggest, one, biggest stakes online. Uh, and then I met Timofe, and then we just, I just start playing like crazy <laughs> games and the life actually from like a really structured, you know, like a sport type guy. I didn't drink alcohol before I was like 22 maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it just like go went pretty crazy, but I enjoyed it because uh, I just know that uh, I kind of evolved as a human so i can like understand when yeah. i like go over the top or not so i just like feel confident that i can make the right choice and i, I want to ask about the two hundred thousand dollar buy-in tournament the yeah. unique format you were the pro and there's a businessman yeah. how was your pairing and and how did that come about oh actually <laughs> my pairing went done better than me because he cashed <laughs> uh 
it's uh, we met in Monaco in one of my first AP, EPTs, like one okay. of my first lifestyles. Basically, you went both deep in the main event, and uh, we speak same language. Uh, we just like been talking to each other a little bit, and he happened to be like a, a businessman, and I'm pretty. Even though I'm an introvert, but I, I'm like a, a easygoing person. So uh, we were just talking, and then there was this event, and uh, it's like, hey, why don't don't you come also play? And uh, we agreed. I had a very good stack in the beginning, but I mean that's how it goes in the poker. You know, you never know. You yeah. can have two big blinds and win tournament, or have like a infinite stack and lose. It's just uh, everything is possible in the game for sure. Absolutely, and I mean it is again the Coin Rivet Invitational. It's unique. What do you think of this format? I don't think in Coin Rivet Invitational we had like a really bad players. Everyone is like poker enthusiasts, right. so everyone knows how to play. It's just that. It's a bit nice mix of that they have first eight levels of a yeah. uh, like they play with each other and then they mix it up. They have a lot of nice sweats going on, so it's just uh, it adds a lot of a lot of flavor. You know, no one wants to watch like people tank forever in the hoodie and stuff. It mm -hmm. Just uh, even though turn off, uh, I get it when people do it because. They play for the big money and they just bought in, so they use the rules to their advantage. Nothing wrong about it, right? right. So, cannot judge people. But uh, I think events like that, it's like it's probably the future in terms of the money, especially like even in the some of the private games, you need to like uh, come with your friends or like go place like states. I got introduced with some people and then mm -hmm. uh, I was able to play. But at the other point, also, it's like, uh, you just don't want to go all, like, you need to have your skill because if you go over the top to get into some good games, it also doesn't feel good, right? Because if your life uh, depends on it, it's just, the, the people will feel it that you are like kind of needy in this regard. So yeah. it's like, that's how I, I felt in London because there was this one million drop and I felt like I had like a, massive edge in the in the in the tournament and uh, i'm like well you pick those guys i mean okay i just play the main and play the other other tournaments right. uh, i went both to jack but i mean for now now i'm uh, i guess more established and uh, i'll have a bit more connections so i'll play the other ones how do you feel you're perceived by the poker community? Because again, GG Super Millions, your your involvement with GG, right? You're mm -hmm. you're a known player. You play the highest stakes. People get to watch online. They see clips. What do you feel you're perceived? I mean, but everyone, I guess, is different. But I guess a bit of a degen, I think, uh, and uh, by some like a super pro <laughs> for some. I I don't. I actually don't think about how I'm being perceived, but. I dialed down a bit on the DJ side because I don't want to be in bad influence for the other people. I think that's not too good because actually you might be, for example, when I, when I was moving up the stakes, I was looking out for some other players. So, mm -hmm. But I just try to be perceived like, uh, you know, that if you work hard on something, it doesn't need to be poker, you can do well. You know, right. I just like bring... Uh, positive <laughs> energy because I was starting, people were saying, oh, it's already poker is solved, blah, 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 so much like uh, strong players. But if you have this attitude in your life, you cannot achieve anything, which is just gonna be like uh, miserable, I think. Yeah, so. that's great advice. Just like any sport or anything, yeah, those anything people are in solving life, uh, this or that, you can you can find a way to 100%. be the best if you if you work. I love that. What uh, in upcoming plans, I mean, Triton stops. Is that on your? You've now spent frequenting. Do you? What? I guess I'll start with this. What separates Triton from other stops? You played all over the world. Oh, it's uh, just. Um, I, I would say it's best event, and it's not like advertising or anything because right. first like a Champions League of Poker because it's everything very um, like close. You don't have as many people. You have like uh, where everything is well organized. Uh, you just feel the difference. It's like if someone comes to the first stop, even the recreational players, if they come, they, they feel the difference between like some like EPT and like a Triton event plus uh, 
Uh, the binds are higher, obviously, because uh, if I, let's say, travel for some tournament, I need to think, okay, so I need to have one day together, play a few tournaments, maybe I just stay at home in my like a comfort, like uh, be in pants, play, drink coffee and just like I play some online games, which are like uh, pretty good. So uh, but I like Triton, it's a, it's a good mix, especially if uh, it's uh, flights are good, but I think uh, everyone is really missed the traveling aspect because we have we've been locked in lockdown for like a couple of years. So. Yeah. And tell me about high versus online and live now. So you've done both, yeah. you've had success in both. What's more overall enjoyable for you? Uh, I will still say uh, online, but for a bigger stakes and more tables, I think. But as everyone said, Henrik too, everyone who came first to the live scene, he's getting burnt, uh, like, because, you know, we are coming with this uh, arrogance, I would say, like, mm -hmm. we know that they don't play as optimal as we will think, but they have some tricks up their sleeves and... The uh, live players, you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different, so it's for sure you different. Need to, you need to learn the... Everyone gets the... need to learn it the hard way, I think. So, uh, uh, took some time, but now, now I'm comfortable in both. And, uh, like, let's say whenever... What, some year I play more live, some year I play more online. Right. But even if I play only live, I just try to have like a couple, at least one, two sessions online just to keep my uh, like instincts sharp because you just get more repetition. It's important. For sure. And of course, I got to ask about this bluff in the main event. I mean, Queen 10 off versus, I believe, Jack 8 on mm -hmm. Jack 6-6. Six, six, and, you know, you, you, if you could maybe replay a bit of the action and why, what was going through your head and, mm -hmm. and in this spot, what, what happened here? Well, so I had still plenty of chips. And uh, so I opened Queen 10, Jack, I mean, Jack 6-6-6 six, six, six with a hard flop. And this slope is bluffed quite often because the big blind should have more trips. So I just bet, I just got raised instantly and uh, I just thought to see at least one card, maybe queen or 10 gonna be improved or uh, my opponent or my opponent was gonna slow down. He kept on betting and I don't know, it just like uh, sometimes you just try like, like, you try to numb it, but I think I have a good sense. I can feel, I just felt that something not right. I don't know, and uh, I still have some chips in play. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, man, that's, I, th I think he's either maybe flash draw that we will fall. Right, you didn't have a qu queen or ten of hearts, right? Yeah, it's yeah, It's an important yeah, part of the tournament, jack, the bubble. I, I wasn't like, I thought maybe some tag jacks will have, but I just thought that my line is pretty strong, a lot of chips in play. And even if I am not right, I still have enough. So, I mean, that's how it's about poker. You just sometimes need to go with your gut feeling and I think I have a good one. With this. That was a nice hand. And are you surprised though, in your mind though? I think this is something interesting that I've struggled with personally too, where it's like, I want to be more aggressive. I want to find spots, but like, I, let's say you figure he has a jack. Are you expecting him to fold a weak jack there, though? Uh, that in that, that line, I expect at least, well, now we just go through mad, but uh, let's say if half the time he has a jack, if he falls like 35% of the time on the jack, that's profitable. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the moment, I wasn't really thinking about it like this, but... I just thought it's gonna work uh, more yeah. than it should. Uh, uh, so, I mean, it, it showed out pretty crazy, but... Uh, because also this particular player, right? Like he's, uh, he is not afraid. He plays with I pots, know, he's but, tough to bluff. Uh, and he knows you know that too, right? So yeah, but yeah. you know, can you imagine just playing well for two days and you don't, you don't have a trips and you're like, <laughs> you used to pros always value betting you and you're like, well, I mean... Like yeah, I'm going to bust on the bubble. And yeah, like you, I the mean, you're just used to... That's actually one of the things I want to say is that it's a big myth that uh, pros are just like needs waiting for value. You just see Michael, you see Linus with his like moves and like uh, uh, Fedor and uh, 
it, they very often actually pros are bringing way more action to the game to, than the recreational players even though uh, it's like a big myth that oh they just want to wait for the hand and the stack it's like uh, usually people who actually are weaker at the game they say it mm -hmm. and then just to prevent their coming but uh, right. <laughs> the, the pros are actually the one that bringing the hit as you can see on the online and uh, yeah i mean it's pretty fun that it's worked out and uh, <laughs> we also even fun <laughs> not maybe not for me if he had a six <laughs> but uh, I'm like, well, I'm like to be a bit extreme. I think that uh, separates. You don't, don't need to be afraid of mistakes. If you're like too tense and afraid, you're gonna be play your middle game and you don't gain the massive biggest edge you can have. But I just thought in that moment, uh, probably that was a profitable play. Very cool. And what about uh, online with this GG Super Millions? I got to ask you because, again, I'm the, I'm the host. I see you there a lot. Mm -hmm. What do you like? It seems like you play it every week and you mm -hmm. almost final table every week. What What is uh, so special about Oh, that? it's a special because, like, if you compare it to other tournaments, you have those tournament series that are, like, twice a year maybe. Yeah. But GG Millions are, like, every... Uh, a week basically Sundays, and then yeah. every Sunday you know that you have a lot of plenty of tournaments to play you, not only the millions but the the 1k is really pretty cool and uh, it's just good for practice plus uh, my schedule is good for the to play it because sometimes if it's like very late at night it's not as convenient right and also I just have a bunch of cash game tables so I usually just like a Sunday it's much like a uh, grind day so I just play a lot during Sunday and uh, uh, it's uh, really cool that uh, it gets a lot of guarantees like we get 100 150 people at least uh, yeah. and uh, you see that I am this year is was pretty good for me for the millions and it's very good for the repetition because if you've been let's say you have this situation like uh, on live when there are certain stacks, but you've been practicing this situation online for a long time. Mm -hmm. You just feel more like at like at home. You just know what to do. And right. It's like you just be you are more confident. Na with, yeah, uh, natural. Know. Makes sense. Um, what I gotta ask future future aspirations. You, you mentioned handball. You play professionally. Would you, is there any like to do you love handball? Like, would you like to buy a team, uh, football team? What, what's nah, like? Any, any I, goals? I think buying a team is a waste of money. To be honest. <laughs> Okay. But uh, maybe I'll help some players, maybe fighters. I like I like f UFC, like mm -hmm. maybe something like this. But as a future aspiration, will be more just uh, enjoy life. Maybe spend a bit more time with family. But still, I want to compete. I like to be competitive in the game. It's it's a great feeling when you know you have the edge and you do something nice and people try to figure it out. It's just a very good feeling, especially even today. Like I played, uh, I think, very good uh, during the evening and uh, it's a nice feeling and I actually miss it from the sport. So I have that feeling in poker and uh, I just uh, enjoy and I don't like when I feel that I'm getting out of play. So I just get back into the work and, you know, it's just like a... Uh, so far, I'm young and I don't feel burned out, so I just want right. to play. So. In terms of study and review, I'm, I'm not going to go for your, all your secrets, but mm -hmm. how much, what would you say you play versus kind of review uh, study at I this think point? at the start of, uh, of my career, it was like a lot of learning. Then I was had a like playing phase. Yep. I hit like a brick wall. I didn't know like uh, how to beat some certain limits. Mm -hmm. Study more again, play a lot. And now it's like, I don't know, maybe 80, 20, something like this. Uh, if it's something fun, interesting, trying to learn a bit of a new game, maybe a bit of PLO, because the cash game, heads up, tournaments, they're all different shades. So I'm proud of myself that I can be competitive in three of those aspects. And uh, yeah. I think it's uh, 80, 20 really depends on the format because like if I'm getting curious about some typical situation then I just try to dissect it deeply and then it also gives you like, the confidence because uh, you saw that spot and then you just play it more confidently plus uh, 
But I think uh, the fourth one that I will want to mention is uh, uh, keeping up my shape because I, I spent some time like uh, in Macau, in a bit of in Vegas, like last, not this year, but like before. And it's not like healthiest lifestyle. So, mm -hmm. but to keep uh, focus for a longer time, it's quite important in poker because as you know, like one mistake, you just lose the chips and it's like a brain folk, it's not, uh, yep. it's not nice. So I think that aspect is like a bit undervalued. I'm taking inspiration from like uh, chess players and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so they just take care of the body is important as well, which is on my list to improve in that part. For so far, I'm cruising because I still have a good sport background, so <laughs> it's all good. But I know that at some point I need to, you know, <laughs> get in the uh, gym more and, and yeah, yeah. Yes. So I things. need to just yeah. like think a bit more about uh, it. I'm with you on that. My last question is: as a again, I, I, I don't want to overdo it, but people look up to you. You're you're a known poker. Mm -hmm. You're young, and people know who you are. As a, a call an ambassador, your relationship with GG, and mm -hmm. and you are known as ambassador of the game. What is that mean to you and what do you want to embody for other people? Uh, I just want to say that Poker Dream is still alive and that's uh, if someone is from situation that he feels kind of lost, like doesn't know what to do, that it's still possible, maybe not even in the poker, but in the other areas, like it's a bit considered, it's uh, estimates of my nickname like limitless so you just just put your time into it uh, be a bit more relaxed in life and good things can happen if you work hard and uh, don't take the losses too serious like i had some losses in my life and like i had that much and stuff but they actually improved me as a player and right. uh, that's important in life and not only in poker so it's uh, and it's just a game, but it's a fun way to make a living, but it's a hard, it's a lot of hard way to make a living, that's for sure. Absolutely, and, and you just mentioned this, I do have to ask, Limitless, where did that come from, that username? I just think it was something interesting that when I play, that's gonna be inspiring to me, and uh, Limitless was taken, so I take a, took a big eye, and uh, I'm like, well, if I'm gonna play and I'm gonna feel bad and look my nickname, Limitless will play properly, let me <laughs> won't tilt. Right. I just felt like a, it's like a, uh, I'll just say, um, a positive, just a positive, a positive po affirmation. Exactly, so if you have, it's all about your thoughts in your head. Like if you have bad thoughts all the time, you have a bad mood, it's like, um, yeah. our value sets is we are just, uh, Everything is in our head, mainly, mostly. Like a lot of overthinking going on, especially in social media area and stuff. So yeah. if you have good thoughts, you have good, uh, I, good mood. I like that. Say that's actually my original username was Kid Who Won, right? It was also yeah. like I, mean, I think I'm like, all right, I'm gonna win. It's positive and yeah, makes yeah. a lot of sense. It looks like it's working for you. And we want to thank uh, Victor for his time, also known as Limitless. And we will have more episodes coming up on the Coin Rivet podcast. And, and Victor, where can they follow you on socials? Limitless dash poker, Instagram, and the Twitter is, I think, the same. Uh, just Google and then it will happen. It, it will be there. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post some like updates and things like that about the challenges or maybe current endeavors. I am releasing a book soon as well. Oh, wow, cool. Not like a poker strategy book but more like a uh, like a bit of a lifestyle a lot of like some stories things like that mm -hmm. we are already in process of uh, translating it very cool uh, but uh, more about that later so uh, uh, we'll have a follow-up we'll have a follow-up oh, yeah, break it down yeah. so all right thank you very much to uh, to victor and yeah give him a follow check him out and uh, continued success here another successful stop at Triton for him finishing third in the main event and number two all time on the Polish money list I believe behind Dmitry mm -hmm. Urbanovich so keep an eye on him I'm sure we'll see you at the top there and uh, congrats on all your success thank no, you for thank coming you.